Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I've got a very affordable fragrance haul for you. I've got three fragrances that have come into my collection during the month of March and I've been trying them out for over a month now so I feel like I know them a little bit better and can talk about them. I'd say all of these are extremely affordable. They're all priced at £40 or less for a bottle. And all three of these are things that people generally don't talk about on YouTube. So I always find that interesting when I see something different. So I'm hoping you find that interesting too. So the first fragrance is one that I got from TK Maxx. In fact, two of these fragrances in this haul I've bought from TK Maxx. TK Maxx is somewhere that you have to keep going to find anything that you actually want to buy. And the more you go, the more you buy. I have really not seen that good of deals in TK Maxx for a long time, but for some reason, these two fragrances got me. So the first fragrance is one from a brand called Reminiscence, a brand that I had never heard of. I didn't know anything about, so I looked them up and apparently they are a brand that also sell jewellery. They are a designer brand and I bought a fragrance from Les Notes Gourmand line and the one I bought was Iliotrope. So there's also a, a pink one, which is Grimauve, and there's also a white one called Dragé. I haven't tried either of those, but I know that the pink one is a notorious Killian uh, Love Don't Be Shy dupe, but I don't know how obviously how close or, or far away from that fragrance it actually is, but that's that's what people say. So the bottle looks like this. It's in this really pretty kind of green opaque glass. It makes me think of La Durée macaron, you know, like pistachio macarons. And it also really made me think of Easter. And actually I wore this fragrance quite a bit at Easter. It did really make me think of the perfect fragrance to, to go on an Easter egg hunt for. It has that feel. It is a really fun one. It reminds me of like Alice in Wonderland and it just has that sort of whimsical feel about it. It's sort of something that's akin to a more gourmand version of insolence. It's something that's less floral and more gourmand, but on that sort of same idea of being just fun and, and different and vintage but modern, that kind of thing. So this one I've been really impressed by and I almost didn't buy it because of the mixed reviews. I understand why people have mixed reviews because there is fig at the top of this fragrance and that makes this fragrance green. So initially when you first spray this, this fragrance really is really quite figgy. There's no getting away from it. If you don't like fig, you will not like this fragrance. But I think the, the main thing for me is, is like a, a green almondy marzipan. So this smells like the almonds are still in their shells. They smell milky. They smell like they've still got that kind of furry coating on. I don't know whether you've ever, ever tasted a fresh almond straight off a tree, but they are very distinctively different. They have a green milky taste to them and that's how this fragrance smells initially. I think this fragrance does just say heliotrope all over it though because with heliotrope you get a, a kind of an almondy, almost cherry pie feeling and I do get that in the opening. It, it's delicious. Heliotrope is a really gourmand smelling floral note and I just never realised how much I enjoyed heliotrope in fragrances until I bought this fragrance. I always knew that I enjoyed it, but I didn't know just quite how much. Um, I, can, I can see why people wouldn't like it because of that fig, but also because as it dries, the patchouli becomes to dominate more. So as it dries, it does turn into a more kind of cake-like vanilla fragrance, but still with that almondy undertone, still smelling quite like marzipan, but it also transforms into something that smells slightly of Play-Doh. Also, with that patchouli becoming more dominant, it also reminds me a little bit of fabric plasters. And I, as a child, was obsessed by plasters. I would pretend that I had injuries so that I could get a fabric plaster because I just love the smell of them. And that's fine by me because, you know, I, that clearly that scent memory has continued and I still enjoy that smell. But I know that other people perhaps will not enjoy that smell. So yeah, for me, this one is, is like the June fragrance because it's, it's got all the things that are in it that I really enjoy. And it's such a nice, rich, vanilla-y, almondy, gourmand, powdery, beautiful fig fragrance that I am just in love. So this fragrance was £30 for 100ml. And I would say this is probably one of my more successful blind buys. I really feel like I haven't tried anything that is this good for a while especially in this kind of gourmand realm. This is something that I really enjoy. And 
I think gourmand is just a tricky category for me. I, there are some things that I just find sickly or too much. This one isn't too much for me, I think because of that fig. It's something that does have good longevity. It has good projection if you're worried about those things. I think this fragrance could become cloying in hot weather. So I think I would probably avoid wearing it in summer. But I think, you know, for spring, autumn and winter, this fragrance is, is really, really great. I think this would be absolutely delicious on a cold cold day in winter. If you wear this, you're, you're basically going to smell like an almondy marzipan kind of spiced vanilla cake. I don't think you can really go wrong with this. I can imagine that this would be popular, you know, with partners. I can't see how anybody could dislike this really um, on somebody else. I think this is something that is just going to make you smell edible. So how can you lose? So that's some um, heliotrope by Les Notes Gourmand Reminiscence. So the second fragrance that I've bought is one from Miller Harris and they are a brand that have been going since 2000. And I think this means that I've actually bought a niche fragrance. I think, I think Miller Harris would count as niche because they don't make anything else. Are you all shocked? I'm shocked. I didn't mean to. So the box looks like this. So this is um, Found at Dusk, which I actually saw in TK Maxx. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to hold my hands up and say I only bought this because I saw it for £20. And I know that Miller Harris fragrances sell for over £100. So I thought this has got to be a bargain. But I remember being in TK Maxx and looking at the fragrance notes and trying to decide whether to buy this or not, even at £20. Because I don't want to be stuck with things I don't love. And this one... It was, it was a good blind buy. It was something that I do love. I think the reason I love this is because it's so natural smelling. If I could describe this fragrance in one word, it would be natural. There is nothing artificial about this fragrance at all. It is one of the most um, memory evoking fragrances I have tried in a long time as well. It's got that sort of garden feel. It feels like a garden before a storm. It's got that hot humid, damp, foreboding, summery feel about it when you know there's a thunderstorm coming. And I think the reason I think of that is because it it opens with blackcurrant leaves for me. So the opening is like walking towards my dad's greenhouse. We always had blackcurrant bushes growing outside the greenhouse. So you smell the blackcurrant bushes, and then you go inside the greenhouse and you get that sort of spicy, earthy, tomato leaf smell. So this just takes me right back to childhood. There's also other things that grew in my dad's garden. So there's also a mint note in this fragrance and the mint is just so green and fresh and natural. It's not like a, you know, a breath mint or, you know, a, a sweet mint. It's nothing that is overly sugary. It's a very natural, very gentle green mint note. There's also a very sort of green citrus in the opening of this fragrance, but it's quite gentle. But it just gives it a little bit of sort of summer heat and that sort of um, freshness. It adds freshness, takes away that earthiness a little bit from the tomato leaf that would perhaps be a little bit too much without that citrus. I think this fragrance, as it dries, it becomes a little bit blackcurranty. It gets a little bit purple. There's a fruitiness to this fragrance, but it's still tempered by all those leaves. You also get a basil note coming through. So the basil is so natural again. It just smells exactly like when you buy a basil plant it, and chop it off to put on your pizza. It is so just spot on for basil. I am amazed at how accurate this fragrance is with how these notes smell. And everything is so distinctive whilst also being very well um, sort of encompassed in this fragrance. It does give, send you on a journey. It does change. It does progress but they are just so easy to spot the notes in this fragrance. There's something also a little bit woody and a little bit resinous in this fragrance. And then as it dries further, it becomes more of a drier mint feel to this fragrance. You also get a stronger tomato leaf note and then the musk appears. And the musky dry down is really beautiful as well. So the whole thing just takes you on a journey. It's something that I really didn't expect this to be this good for £20. I'm amazed that I managed to get this for £20. I would for sure pay a lot more money for this fragrance. I think maybe this fragrance suffers from its note profile. So because it is so natural, because it is so aromatic, I think it's something that doesn't 
fit easily into you know a going out category or a daytime fragrance category or a um dare i say it, a female category or a male category i feel like this fragrance really is slap bang in the middle of all of that it's something that doesn't really fit anywhere and i think that's probably why it was so um inexpensive and in tk max probably because it's been discontinued because it just doesn't get the love but it deserves love because it's really nice so actually when i first tried this fragrance i was kind of concerned that it wouldn't have good longevity i thought maybe that's why it's not popular but actually on me it lasted five or six hours and i think actually it does project so i think of wearing this one on a summer's day it just has that sort of feel to it i would love to wear this around other people because i feel like it's something that people will remark on it's something that's very distinctive it's something that could be your signature fragrance but I also feel like it's just not in a category that people love. You know, people love gourmands, people love florals, people don't tend to love aromatic fragrances. So I feel like this one sort of fits with things like Alluring Fig. It's a little bit fruity, it's a little bit green. So I'm hoping to rock this one over the summer and I'm really pleased that I picked this one up, especially for £20. It was an amazing deal. So that's Found at Dusk by Miller Harris. So the final fragrance is one that somebody gave me. So Service Vibes, Andreas, won a raffle. And I entered this raffle too. It was to raise money for Ukraine. It was organised by a smurfy girly here on YouTube. She did an amazing job. She raised a load of money, I think about £1,300 for Ukraine. Amazing fundraising efforts. And there were loads of prizes in this raffle. I think there were about 23 prizes in all. And I didn't win anything. But Andreas did. But Andreas lives in Austria, so it's kind of difficult to send fragrances out of this country. It's not really allowed, basically. So he offered his fragrance to anybody that wanted it, and I was the only one who seemed to respond. So I actually got a fragrance called Kadren, or Kadren. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce this. I'm going to go with Kadren. Kadren, and this is from the brand Good Solomon. Although on the bottles it's called Ori. I don't know whether you can see that there. Probably you can't. Anyway, so I got a 30ml bottle of Kedren. So the 50ml bottle on the website retails for £40. So I'm just going to sort of tell you what I think of it. It's something that I, ha again, I haven't smelt before. This is an indie fragrance. This is a small house. So Good Solomon are made by Nikem and she's actually a pharmacist. So Nikem has three fragrances currently out. She has Kedren, Skinwood and Lotus Nut. So she also sent me a sample of Lotus Nut. Actually, I'm going to show you the box because she was so sweet. She even wrote my name on the box. So yeah, she wrote my name on the box. How, how amazing is that? That, you know, you can please me with anything, basically. Just write my name on a box. But yeah, so she sent me, a, she sent me this. And she also sent me a sample of Lotus Nut. And do you know, on, on paper, I probably, out of the two, I would have picked Lotus Nut. But trying them, I think I prefer Kadren. And that has really surprised me. So Kadren is a very aromatic, spicy fragrance again. And I think I'm just into that at the moment. I'm just discovering this whole new world of, of fragrance notes that I've just not smelt because I've always been smelling designer fragrances. And if you only smell designer fragrances, you miss out on a load of different scent profiles because they only do things that are trendy and that will sell. They don't take risks generally, basically, is what I'm saying about designer fragrances. So this one, so I remember when I first got this, I deliberately didn't read the notes. And what I got from it was cardamom, most prominently cardamom is the thing that is bang in your face from this fragrance and I love cardamom it's a little bit green it's a little bit soapy but it's also a little bit spicy and the other thing that I got from this fragrance was mint so I think the listed note is spearmint I wouldn't necessarily have pinned it on spearmint I just got mint and then the other thing that I got from this fragrance was jasmine so you get a very heady jasmine in this fragrance it's very distinctive so I got those three notes. I'm not, I'm going to be honest and just say that I didn't really get much else from this fragrance. But looking at it, looking at the notes, the other thing that I think I can smell in this fragrance is ginger. The ginger is probably adding to the spicy feel of the cardamom. And there's also like an underlying warmth to this fragrance. So I think that probably is the ginger. 
I just think this one is it's really refreshing. It, it feels like a pick me up. It's kind of got a light spiciness about it. It's something that I would never have imagined that I would enjoy. I just thought this wouldn't be for me. I think the thing that I like about this fragrance is that every time I spray it, I get something different. So today I'm getting lemongrass. I get a, a very pungent lemongrass in the opening. And yesterday, I managed to smell cloves in this fragrance and I don't normally like cloves but here I felt like they were quite mild and quite tempered by the other notes so I think maybe I'm just imagining things and smelling different things or maybe I'm just picking up different nuances at different points in the progression of this fragrance but yeah I think this is actually quite a linear fragrance it doesn't really change that much but the opening is a little bit more almost citrusy. I know there aren't citrus notes listed, but I definitely smell today lemongrass. So I'd say this fragrance has quite middling longevity. It's probably around four to five hours and it is quite strong initially. There is definitely quite a strong projection when you first spray this fragrance. So even though this fragrance is quite linear, I would say that it does get a little bit more gingery. It gets warmer as it dries and the mintiness lessens. But really at the end you're left with a cardamom jasmine musk. I think it's really different. I haven't smelled anything like this. I also like lotus nut but not as much as this one. So when I was sent Kadren I was also sent a sample of lotus nut and I would say that lotus nut on paper would be probably the perfume that I would think that I would prefer. From the notes I would I would probably have picked lotus nut out of the two. But actually I prefer Kadren and I think the reason I prefer Kadren is because lotus nut has quite a heavy musk note at the end of it and I find it a little bit cloying. It's a little bit too much for me. I don't think it's probably too much for most people but I think it's something that would trigger a headache with for me especially with the fact that lotus nut has exactly the same jasmine in it as Kadren. So lotus nut is more of a light watery floral fragrance but with that jasmine but it also has a bit of a tropical fruitiness about it but then it also has that nutty musk at the end that I find a little bit troublesome. I, from trying those two fragrances, I'm actually really fascinated to know what Skinwood smells like, which is the new one on their website. So yeah, I don't actually know what this brand is called, whether it's Good Solomon or whether it's Ori, but if you do want to check them out, I'll leave the website link down below. I obviously haven't been given any money for this and I got these for free from a friend. So I don't really have any kind of affiliation or anything with the brand. I'm just letting you know how this smells. I think it's pretty good. And there's no way I would have ever have got to try this or ever thought to try this without without Andreas's generosity. So that's um, Kadren by Good Solomon or Ori. Not sure which one it is. So I hope you enjoyed this haul video. I did kind of go for things that were a little bit out of the box with this, with this video. Um, all three of these are things that I don't really come across very often. And I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did enjoy it, please press the like button and also please consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.